Photographer Doug Julian called and asked if I wanted to go on an adventure. I said, yup. He asked if I wanted to know where we were going, and I said, you can tell me on the way. My name is Eric Rintamaki. I'm a lifelong rock hound. In the very beginning, my dad had me out on the beach from the time I was literally one week old. We traveled to Brimley in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, where we met Eric Rentamaki, the man who in 2017 discovered the glowing rocks of Lake Superior's southern coast. A few years back, I got the idea to go out after work and look for agates at night. I thought, well, I have 36 agates at home that fluoresce under shortwave UV. What if I go out with a long wave flashlight? Eric's innovation of using a black light to hunt for rocks called agates would lead him to discover something new for the Upper Peninsula. I found three little glowing orange rocks. Eric's little glowing rocks had never been seen in Michigan until this moment. I got contacted by some people that bought stones from me about a week after they bought them, and they said they were from the Michigan Mineralogy Project, and that they thought that I might have found something new for the state of Michigan that had previously been undiscovered. So um, I was supposed to not tell anybody and keep it a secret, so I did. And about a week later or so, got an email that said, Eric, we definitely think that you found something new for the state of Michigan. Would you mind if we published you in a book and in a journal? It'll be peer reviewed. And would you mind writing a paragraph about how you discovered these stones? Eight months later, I get the mineral news in the mail and Euperlites is a 386 mineral discovered in Michigan. He said, pick a name, where you're from, or where you found them, and your last name or something, and put L-I-T-E on the end, because that's how the geologists named the fluorescent minerals. They put L-I-T-E on the end. So I said, okay. So for a couple of weeks, I was out at the beach, and I was with my brother-in-law. We're out, the only two people on, two humans on the planet looking for these things. And we're at Lake Superior, looking for them at night. I'm like, you know what? I'm a youper. I'm from the UP of Michigan. So I said, I'm a youper, and they light up. Uperlite, and he's like, that's stupid, that's a dumb name. All the stuff we have over here is very glaciated and rounded. So um, this is a piece straight from the source in Canada, and you can see it's very broken. This is from glacial activity. You can see it's very rounded. About seven to 10,000 years ago, six to eight different glaciers went over this deposit that was in the Coldwell Complex. So it's about 21 miles wide and about 26 miles deep, and it's a giant caldera. And basically what happened was tens of thousands of years ago, there was a giant mountain formed over there. And it was all this sodalite type material, all this stuff. To illustrate how euperlites were spread throughout the Great Lakes region, I thought we would do a little reenactment. This pile of dirt will be the giant mountain of glowing rock in Canada, not to scale. This will be our glacier. As the mile-high sheet of ice came into contact with the mountain, it mowed it down at the base and dragged its rocky remains throughout the Great Lakes Basin. As the glacier retreated, it left the once great mountain in its path in the form of smoothed, glowing rocks. there's like a spray paint pattern. It looks like somebody went ch -ch -ch with spray paint. You have tiny, tiny little dots. And then there's the galaxy pattern that looks like a million stars. And they're much brighter than the spray paint pattern. And then you have like uh, striations where you get the lines through it. And what those are is an ancient fracture where the rock fractured while it was cooling. 
the sodalite infiltrated that channel and then it went back together and cooled and held it together. If you are an adventurer who likes to explore remote areas on Lake Superior's coast and the Upper Peninsula, you just might catch a glimpse of rockhound Eric Rentamaki in his natural habitat, hunting for euprolites and agates. If you do, make sure and say hi. He's one of the coolest guys you'll meet.